My Emirates have been the standout team at the DP World ILT20 with explosive batting and penetrative pace, lifting them to the top of the table and early playoff qualification. And tonight, T20 icon Chiron Pollard pulls on the famous blue again to boost their quest for that coveted gold trophy. It's about doing your role as an individual. Obviously, as a cricketer, I still have a role to play in all three departments of the game, and that's what I have all intentions to do. Golf Giants were inaugural champions in 2023 and won't relinquish their crown easily. They are on the brink of qualification after back-to-back -back wins, built on the back of stifling bowling and the return to form of Shimron Hetmeyer. Can the Giants stay hot tonight, or will my Emirates dent their playoff dreams? It is an exciting time in the DP World ILT20 tonight. We are here at Dubai International Stadium for match 26. It's the reigning champs, the Golf Giants, taking on my Emirates. Certainly is the business end. We look at the table. People are still in it. A lot of teams still in it. Only one with a Q next to their name, and that, of course, is my Emirates. Golf Giants, though, could make a good fist of getting a Q next to their name tonight. It is a lovely, lovely evening here in Dubai. A little breeze around. We're going to head out to the middle now with Simon Dool, the two captains for the toss. Match 26 here at the Dubai International Stadium tonight. Mr Kunal Shah is our TOS representative. Roshan Mahanam is here as well. Karen Pollard is welcome to the DP World ILT20. And James Vince, you have the coin. Deals. Tails is the call. It is tails. That's a good start, Karen. What are you going to do? Oh, we're going to bowl first. Nice to be here. Have you been keeping an eye on things from down in South Africa? Yeah, of course. Um, I've been watching the guys. Um, they have been doing pretty well. You know, obviously, the start they have gotten in the first eight games and the way they have played, you know, the cricket matches, you know, has been phenomenal to watch, you know, from television. A few changes. I know four boys have left. Um, can you name all the guys coming in? What have you done with the side? Yeah, obviously, obviously, the skipper, he's, he's gone. These guys have gone on international sort of duty. So, obviously, I come in for, for, for Tim David. Dan Mosley comes in, comes in for the skipper. Um, VJ the leg spinner, he comes in for Akil Hussain and Jordan Thompson, he comes in for Faruqi. All right, what have you seen of the tournament? What have you seen of the surface that you like? Um, obviously, the boys have been swinging around, have been moving around for a long period of time, just like the T10 in November. Um, and get the opportunity to bowl first, obviously try to restrict them for as least as possible. But again, chasing has not been as easy as you think as well. So obviously there's been a formula that has been working you know, for the guys. And obviously it's a matter of just trying to fit in and hopefully you know, continue that. All right, nice to see you here. Go well tonight. Thank you. Nothing changes, James. You've got to set a total again. How do you feel? Uh, yeah, as you say, nothing changes. Kind of expect it. Um, we would have bowled first had I eventually won a toss, but um, only because, you know, the chance of due coming in later. But as you say, last three games, he batted first and managed to, to get the wins on the board. So try and replicate that this evening. 187 two games ago, 126 last game, but you've won them both. What's been the key to those wins? And, and is it played that badly? Um, no, I think last game the, the scores were under par. It certainly held a bit for the, the slower bowlers and the seamers taking the pace off. But, um, yeah, I think the, the wicket warranted a few more runs. This one looks like it's got a fraction more grass on it, so hopefully it's a decent wicket this evening. What's the message to the lads? Same again, got to try and continue this momentum. Obviously, we're getting towards the business end of the tournament, um, playing a team tonight that have been playing really good cricket, um, despite some changes they've got in their side. They're hopefully a side we're going to come up against again soon. So, yeah, try and lay down a marker and, and get the points on the board tonight. And you've kept the faith with the same uh, crew? Same team this evening. Yeah. All right, go well, eh? Good luck. Here you go. Corin Pollard has won the toss. My Emirates will bowl first. Thank you very much, Simon. Let's see what's coming up on the menu tonight. Coming up in Cricket Safari, we discuss the return of one of the greats of the T20 game, Kyron Pollard, and what it means for my Emirates. Nicholas Poron tells us why Spiceman Andre Fletcher is his teammate with the most movie star potential. And golf giant Shimon Hetmeyer answers some tricky questions in this or that. Nala Brian, Wazim Akram alongside me, and I'm excited to talk about Pollard being in the house at Dubai International Stadium, but I'll start with the golf giants. Yep. We're going to see them with the bat shortly, and a person who has remembered how to use his, without sounding too rude, is Shimron Hetmeyer. Yeah. He has had quite the tournament, a tournament of two halves. Yeah, very much so. I spoke to him a little while ago, and he just said it's, it's right to peak at this time as opposed to maybe starting like a train and then falling away at the back end. 
And it's no coincidence that Tetmar is firing and the Gulf Giants are getting wins on the board. So for Andy Flower and James Vince, this is a massive plus. A really quiet start for Shimon Hetmar, but all of a sudden, the powerful man from Guyana, who had a good tournament last year, yeah. batting in a very difficult position at number five, number six. He's excelling. First four games, nothing. Average of six, strike rate below 90. That's not Hetmar. Last four, 148 runs, striking at one... Oh, 167. Yeah, it's more like you, Shimron. Yeah, not too bad at all. So, uh, was if you're looking at the golf giants and the situation that they find themselves in there, players like that hitting their straps at the right time, their coach must be pretty chuffed with it because it is absolutely the perfect time of the tournament for them absolutely, to be hitting their yeah, straps. Absolutely, Laura. Like he said himself, admire that I want to peak at the back end of the tournament, and that's what exactly he did, he's doing. I mean, we just mentioned his strike rate is 167 in the last four games, and I think one over from Sean Williams from Zimbabwe. I mean, change the game altogether for this particular special better. Four sixes, 316 and over, a couple of boundaries, and from there onwards, you never look back, guys. I want to talk about the young UAE players that there are in this tournament, and that's what this tournament is all about as well, about Absolutely. them and, and bringing them up uh, with some absolute superstars. But we're finding some superstars in our midst with the spin bowlers from the Gulf Giants. Let's start with Zubia. What have you liked about what you've seen here? Well, he's a confident young lad because he's not overawed by the situation. You know, you come into a tournament like this and it's easy when you don't get a crack early on and then you get a little bit nervous when you're brought into the side. But look at the lengths he's bowling. He's attacking the stump. He's driving the ball into the surface. In this part of the world, when you bowl leg spin, generally you'll see bowlers drive the ball into the surface and attack the stumps. He looks like he's really settled well into the side. It's no, it's no coincidence, really, that Andy Flower and his environment has allowed a young player to flourish. Great to see a leg spinner uh, from the UAE delivering uh, for the Gulf Giants. I love he looks like he's enjoying it so much, along with another one of his teammates, Ayan Khan. Let's talk about him, Was What do you like about this young man? I think what I like about him uh, is temperament. He is kind of a player who, who enjoys these big moments, big players, big games, and he's a gun fielder. That's something you don't see talk about when you talk about UAE players. So UAE cricket looks in very good hand with these two top spinners. He's only 18 years of age, I think 18, 19, and he enjoys it. I spoke to him the other day. He was uh, on a uh, Urdu slash Hindi show with us, the Cricket Safari, and he spoke confidently originally from Mumbai, but uh, he said, uh, you know, I just don't have many friends. I just love playing cricket, and most importantly, I'm not on social media yet. Stay That's off a it. plus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as you can. Right, we're going to head out to the middle now with two of my favourite Kiwis, Simon Dool, Danny Morrison. Ah, uh, Laura, we love you. We've missed you, but it's good to see you back here in Dubai. Now then, the pitch here is number three, and the essence of it's quite important because we're one side of the square, and so that boundary out there to that eastern side is only 64 metres. Sun setting in the west over that 78 metres, and then downtown, nice little hit to 80. So, um, yeah, you've got to be mindful as bowlers and also batters. I know they get excited when they see a smaller boundary. Speaking of excitement, Pitch doctor Simon all alongside. Um, excited about this one? Looks all right? It looks better, Danny. Yeah, just talking to the two captains. And James Vince in particular, 187 two games ago. They got defended it comfortably. They only got 126 in their last game here a couple of days ago and defended that as well. He said it just stuck in the surface. This one does look a bit better, though. There's a nice covering of grass on it. It might skid on a little bit better. Sides batting second have been the oracle here, haven't they? It's always been the way. You win the toss, you bowl first. 165 is about the average score. I think you're going to need at least that here tonight batting first. 170, 175, put it on the board. They might find it hard to chase later on. Ah, love you boys. I love that. OK, fantastic. So we take a look at the Golf Giants who we're going to see with the bat. Talk us through this team. Not many changes, if any, actually. Yeah, was. not many. James Smith need to click in. James Winslow's looking good. Chris Lynn is their main player. Jordan Cox also not getting quite a few runs. Rasmus is there too. Then Hetmar is the main man. Ayan Khan, the spinner. Overton is also looking good. Dominic Grace played well last innings. Overall, it's a good side. Everybody's kind of peaking at the right time, Laura. Nal, I'm worried for you. There are plenty of changes to talk us through here in this My Emirates side. Don't worry. Don't worry <laughs> at all. We've got Dan Mousley in. He's been in India with England Lions and had a very successful time. Jordan Thompson, the all-rounder from Yorkshire. Um, Obviously great to have Karim Pollard here. And we're looking out for Vijay. Bottom of the screen there, Sri Lankan. He's played one T20 international. He's very tall. He's a leg spinner and he gives it a good rip. And the coach, Robin Singh, was very, very excited to get him in the team tonight.
It's a very exciting matchup here at Dubai International Stadium. We're going to talk more about Pollard in the house very soon. We take a short break, but on our way there, let's catch up with Shimron Hempire, see how he goes with a few of our tricky questions in this or that. Weeks or treadmill? Treadmill. Instagram or Snapchat? Instagram. Gold or silver? Gold. Tendulkar or Lara? Lara. Spicy or mild? Spicy. Dogs or cats? Cats. Tea or coffee? Tea. Beach or pool? Pool. Money or love? Love. Finally, score a century or take a fifer? Take a fifer. Score a century already. Welcome back to Dubai International Stadium. A huge match up here. My Emirates have won the toss, and that means the golf giants are going to have a bat first. Let's have a look at how these two teams match up. There you go, another boundary. Brings up the 50 for Captain Nicholas Buran. They've been the benchmark for you know, around the world, the, the MIE, our MI family, to be honest. And you know what? I think we have an advantage over them is that the fact that they've had players leaving um, their, their squad and we've had a nice settled squad here. So we've got our formulas and, um, and what we think will work for our, yeah, to, to get the win. Our blueprint hasn't changed too much over the, over the course of the tournament, whereas their, theirs will. Um, they're missing three big names. He's in the edge on that. A big celebration it is for Faruqi, who continues to pick up wickets. Obviously, it's about continuity. The guys have been doing well. It's just a matter of trying to fit in and do your bit as a player, you know, as well. So for me, it's about doing my bit as a player, bringing my experience, you know, to the fore. And you know, hopefully, you know, we can continue. This is the back end of the tournament, one of the most important parts of the tournament. So, you know, this is the business end where you want all the ducks in a row and guys understanding what is necessary and what is needed to be done in terms of a momentum perspective. Once we do the right things, I think we should we should be able to, to cross the line. Um, the last time that we played against them in Abu Dhabi was kind of a it was kind of a, a it was not kind of it was a close game. I think it was just we were just like a hit or two hits away from actually crossing the line. So it's just for us to to do to basically make a, a like replicate the, the good things that we would have done in our past games and this even the stuff that we didn't do well to just correct them. It's about doing your role as an individual. Obviously, as a cricketer, I still have a role to play in all three departments of the game, and that's what I have all intentions to do. It might work, it might not work, but at the end of the day, give yourself the best opportunity in terms of practice and process, you know, for that to happen um, and just to continue the good work. Oh, has he taken us? They're going to have fresh energy, but we've got momentum. And yes, they do as well, but. This is why it's one of the greatest comps in the world. Oh, if that doesn't get you up for this contest, I don't know what will. Niall and Wasm still alongside me now, and it's very exciting to have Polly in the house. Karen Pollard, such a legend of the T20 game. Um, how huge is he going to be for my Emirates today? We talk about disruptions, but when it's someone like Kyron Pollard, does yes, it really it's, matter? It's a nice, it's a nice disruption to have, isn't it? Because you've lost so much ability, you've lost so much experience, and then this man flies in, jets in on the private jet, 647 matches at Tower of Strength. All the experience. 18 years ago, he made his debut. Look at the runs, 12 and a half thousand plus. Incredible ball striker, incredible match winner, and just an aura. He brings the aura to the ground. You get to the stadium and you just feel really good about him being here. And he's not bad at hitting them over the rope as well. And so he's got you good... didn't come in on a private jet. You I wasn't, I did. I'm so yeah. sorry. I'm so yeah. sorry. And he's he's also got good, very good work ethics. I worked with him in PSL a couple of years. He just comes there, like he said in his interview a little while ago. I'm here to do my job, you know, what I've been told to do as a skipper. And I think uh, he is the most experienced T20 cricketer we've just seen. 600 plus T20 games. And he, he travels the world. He's a T20 specialist, a league specialist. He'll, he'll make, uh, I mean, he'll make uh, this team, I think, better 
uh, at back, end, back end of the tournament. And it is, of course, a back end. It's so important, this matchup. They know how to play each other. They've obviously played each other a lot. Yeah. They played in the qualifier against each other last year. He played a good knock, yet a good knock, despite their team not winning. 57 off 30 odd balls. How important is it that he goes out there and does this tonight? Yeah, I think he played really well last season, actually. These, these strokes typified how he went about his business. Powerful leg side, but actually, what? Kyron Pollard last season in the DP World, he picked the right ball and the right bowler to go up against. There wasn't any slogging. He was generally striking around 180, 190 last year, and it was just control hitting. And he's, he's a powerhouse. A game. He's a powerhouse. He's a big unit. Anything in his zone, doesn't matter how quick you are or how much ball is turning, is going for the maximum. That's his quality, Laura. And he's and he's cool. Like I don't I mean he is a cool guy. He's the way a proper he's West around, Indian yeah. cool man guy. He, and Absolutely. Yeah. In terms of the captaincy, what does he bring to this team? Because obviously, um, you know, uh, Nicky P was doing a great job before he left. But what can Pollard bring to this side? Well, this is obviously he's got all the experience in the world. He's not coming off a great tournament in South Africa. His team came last. But when you look at the percentage, he's winning 50%. That's pretty, pretty good. MS Dhoni's up at 60. And Rohit Sharma, who's exceptional, who was his former captain in the IPL. So Pollard, it's experience, but he's got the players alongside him, was him, that know what they need to do. So he's just going to try and fit in as best as he can, get his runs, get his wickets, and then just help the guys who'll be, the guys will be playing good cricket. So I don't think he needs to do anything massive. It's a case of guys were doing well. Let me just come in and support you. Exactly. And he's an experienced captain. He's a calm guy and cool guy, like we said. If things are not, not going well, he won't put pressure, he won't show pressure, and that's how good leader is all about. A player who he'll be uh, using tonight with the ball when he's out there uh, will be Trent Bolt particularly, and uh, a Kiwi, you know I love talking about the Kiwis, but particularly this one, he has done so well this season. He's getting the wickets, he's taking them when his team needs them. Um, how much is he going to rely on this senior figure in the side watch? Absolutely, it's a, this is kind of a wicket, uh, you know, the ball will seem, the ball will swing. They're bowling first, 13 wickets so far, and out of 13, eight wickets are in power play, and that's important, and the lengths he bowled that early on, just back of a length, I'm four, look at the four to six meter length. That's where he gets wicket in his first six overs. Uh, no, I'd love to know why, you know, last season we talked, he didn't get the wickets in the wicket column he has this year. How and why? I reckon he's got a bit more nip about him this year. A little bit slippy. Uh, last year, I think he just got into his work. It took him a little bit of time to get going. This year, he's also had a very good bowling attack alongside him. He's had some real experience alongside him. So actually, he hasn't been as reliant upon, but he's kind of gelled into the mould. And he's he's one of the best fielders still in world cricket. A uh, couple of catches he took in this tournament, he, they're right up there in the ladder. Yeah, they certainly have. See a few young boys in the team, and then old Bolte <laughs> comes in. It looks good. It makes us older ones feel slightly better. I'd love your predictions just quickly, Niall, tonight. I'm going to go for Andy Flower, Gulf Jones. Why? Because they're going to be hungry. They need the win. Andy Flower is going to say, get the win. Make our job easier to get to the semi-finals. Can they make him smile tonight? Who are you going with, Was? Easy, my Emirates. I'm going for my Emirates. Why? I just like them. I think the way they are confident, Polar are there, the skipper. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be good to watch. OK, it's going to be a great matchup here at Dubai International Stadium. It is the Gulf Giants taking on my Emirates. When we come back, live cricket, we'll see you soon.